Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to have a meaningful little chat this morning. <clears throat> you may find this uh, quite interesting. We're going to talk about bacterial corrosion of geysers. Now, uh, this uh, information is uh, available, um, but not very well known. And uh, that's what I want to do this morning, try and create awareness of uh, this bacterial corrosion that can take place when we talk about geysers. But before we do that, I just want to <clears throat> go through this information here. Um, I also asked me to do that again, the tips to continually prevent COVID-19. I'm just going to read through this quickly. Always wear a mask when out in public. Wash your hands with soap or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick and cover your cough or sneeze uh, with a flex elbow or a tissue and then throw the tissue in the bin. And lastly, clean and disinfect frequently used services and objects. So I'm quite sure that we are all aware of this and uh, that we will apply the principles as outlined here. Right, so this bacteria that we are talking about is, that is the Latin name for it. Now my Latin is non-existent, so I'm not even going to try and um, pronounce those two words, but I'll explain to you as we carry on, you know, what that means and where it's found and what, what it does in our day-to-day -day lives. So, first of all, <clears throat> the general description of that bacteria, um, it's referred to as a sulfate-reducing bacteria, known as that funny Latin man with his funny surname. It's also referred to as SRB. That stands for sulfate-reducing bacteria. So this bacteria is a non-pathogenic. In other words, uh, people will not um, get harmed by it. It will not cause death or disease as such, unlike other bacteria like uh, uh, we find as well, like um, Legionella, where a person can die, but the um, result of this one is not as that of... Uh, the disease that can kill one Legionella. The anaerobic bacteria, in other words, they require an oxygen-free aqueous environment. So in a geyser, <coughs> we, the water in the geyser is referred to as the aqueous environment. And uh, if there's no oxygen, then they can start to, to cause the trouble. They're capable of causing severe corrosion of iron, metal, and material in a water system. And that's where the point comes in. So obviously they will not uh, corrode a geyser that is where the tank is not made from um, iron, um, but this is where the, the critical thing comes in. Why? Well, they produce enzymes which have the ability to accelerate the reduction of sulfate compounds uh, to corrosive hydrogen sulfide. Thus, SRB act as a catalyst in the reduction reaction. Um, so that is that's quite interesting. Now, I just want to... Um, help you to appreciate um, sometimes you find that the client is going to phone you and say um, when they open up the hot water tap they get this funny smell it smells like rotten eggs now if you have heard about that or have experienced that um, it happens quite often especially at the coastal areas uh, but up here in Gauteng um, last two three years it's also been noticed and uh, that is what it's all about so if you get a call that uh, rotten eggs are somewhere in the system, then this situation has uh, developed and uh, we are going to see what can be done about it. Now, for this reduction to occur, there's four things that must be present. First of all, this SRB or sulfate reducing bacteria must be present. There must also be sulfates be present. Then an external energy source in the form of free electrons must be present. In other words, um, electricity. And the temperature of the water must be less than uh, approximately 65 degrees Celsius. Now, this may sound quite strange because we know that in terms of the sand regulations is recommended that uh, your geyser temperature must be 60 degrees. And here they talk about the fact that the temperature of the water must be less than approximately 65. So, you know, it's in that region. So one must just keep that in mind. Now, a water system naturally contains sulfate-based compounds, but when sulfite is added to a closed water system as an oxygen scavenger and corrosion inhibitor, the sodium sulfite 
is oxidized to sodium sulfate. Now, excess electrons occur in the water system as a result of ion corrosion at the anode and the cathode salts. So the sulfate reducing bacteria causes the accelerated corrosion of the mechanism of the iron. Now, the presence of sulfate reducing bacteria in the water system may be determined by three methods. As you can see here, first of all, sensory perception. In other words, you can actually then, like I've said, you can smell it. Um, secondly, the pH level uh, must be determined and be uh, um, at a level where it's, it's going to cause this to happen. And then also a biological analysis. Now, guys, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, nobody expect anyone to do that per se. I can tell you this, that by the time that you get that rotten egg smell, it's basically too late. There's nothing else that can be done to uh, curb that unless, you know, we know about the whole situation, how it forms, and to that we understand the, uh, the situation. So let's first go to sensory perception. Uh, since this hydrogen sulfide uh, is a byproduct of the metabolism, the rotten egg odor associated with this compound is an indication that sulfate-reducing bacteria may be present in the water system. It's normally so. It, we say maybe, but um, that is in, the, in most cases, it is the case that there is this sulfate-reducing bacteria, or SRB. The pH level, since uh, hydrogen sulfide is a byproduct of the metabolism, SRB can also cause the pH level of the water system to fall as low as um, a pH of 5. Therefore, if repeated caustic additions are required in order to maintain the pH level of a closed water system within its prescribed control limits, then sulfate-reducing bacteria are most likely present in the system. Just keep that in mind as well. Now, this year is a little bit out of our range as far as plumbers are concerned. I'm including myself, the biological um, analysis, um, biological analysis of a water or a deposit sample of collected uh, from the system may be performed either by laboratory analysis or by field analysis. Um, the basic procedure for both of these techniques involves the addition of the water sample into a container to which nutrients have been added and the incubation of the sample. If the SRBs are present in the sample, they will reduce the sulfate in the medium to sulfite, which in turn reacts with the iron in the solution to produce a black ferrous sulfite film on the sides of the vial within a matter of 28 days. Now, I'm not sure who of us are going to do this. Um, I know one chemical engineer in Belleville in the Cape, and probably he will be the man to go to to do this analysis for us as such. Right. Now, in order to reduce the possibility of sulfate reducing bacteria proliferation in the water system, the following activities are recommended. Um, we have to maintain a water temperature greater than 65 degrees for hot water heating systems. Now, that is only going to be applicable if you know in the areas. In other words, if you have already seen that in a system or you have experienced that, we had many calls from clients who says that they have rotten eggs in the geysers. Um, it's not a matter that the eggs are, are, are boiled there, it's this system that we talk about. Um, then in that case, we have to now go in excess of 65 degrees in order for that uh, situation to be curbed, which is, as I've said earlier, recommendation is that uh, the temperature in your geyser must not really go beyond uh, 60 degrees. And uh, we know that is also in terms of um, our uh, Legionella, uh, Legionella dies uh, in water, in hot water, 60 degrees within 32 minutes. Um, so uh, that should be the case for one hour in a 24 hour period, we should have our water temperature um, at 60 degrees. But this is not the same. Just remember what I said. In this case here, it is not the same because this SRB cannot harm a person. You cannot die from it. Secondly, Reduce the corrosion of iron material in hot water systems by eliminating air ingress into the system. So you don't want to have any air coming into the system as such. And circulate the contents of stagnant domestic hot water heating systems periodically during shutdown periods. So that's also quite a thing to do to, uh, to actually control the and uh, as, a, as a treatment uh, for this presence of this system. 
Now, um, as a summary, we can just refer to the fact that this whole process occurs in soft water when the dissolved solid count in the water range is below 300 parts per million and the conductivity is uh, below 140 microsiemen uh, uh, square per centimeter. Now, guys, what we need to remember here is that when we talk soft water, we know from our experience that uh, according to the SBS, soft water is um, or any water is, re, uh, is measured in parts per million. Parts per million, that means the dissolved solids in that water uh, is measured in parts per million, or as we also refer to it as PPM. Now, from one PPM to 600 uh, PPM, that refers to soft water. In other words, the dissolved solids in that water up to 600 parts per million is, is soft water. Now, in this case here, it's quite interesting that the dissolved solid count is going to be below uh, 300 parts per million. So uh, that is uh, quite significant. And that's why it doesn't appear everywhere. In certain areas, it's going to happen where you have very, very soft water. Now, the uh, uh, sulfate reducing bacteria penetrates the enamel coating of the inner tank of the geyser, excretes enzymes similar to uh, uric acid, which causes the steel to corrode, and the rust manifests on the inside of the geyser tank. Um, I've seen it. It is quite hectic. It looks like stalactites. Those of you know uh, uh, Otsuren, you know the stalactites there in the Kango Caves. But this here is not Kango Cave stalactites. This is, it looks like rust. It is actually rust. So it's quite interesting that through this process, the bacteria is going to penetrate the enamel coating. That's why I've seen a uh, geyser with a more plastic um, sort of like lining on the inside is not going to happen there. And then it excretes uric acid into that. And then this process of corrosion starts to take place. And that's why we talk about uh, bacterial corrosion of the tank. And uh, then those stalactites are going to form. They hang there. They don't fall off until something else happens. Now, if you look at the third point here, yeah, the color of the water remains clear, while the baffle box um, is intact and normal stratification takes place inside the geyser tank. Uh, if, if the baffle box dis, uh, uh, integrates or dislodges, can float to the top of the tank and scour the stalactites off the steel surface. And this scouring effect, together with the high velocity water flow, can cause the discoloration of water. So that is quite interesting. Now, some, uh, well, all geysers basically have a, um, uh, a box, well, not a box. I know about the one company that <clears throat> I was associated with. They've got a plastic baffle box inside. And um, if your temperature is very, very high over a prolonged period of time, in other words, your setting of your thermostat is very high, um, then uh, this plastic can start to disintegrate. And we know what the, this plastic does. It goes to the top. If you open up a hot water tap, then uh, that box or part of it is going to scour against those stalactites if it formed. And uh, you're going to find then that the, uh, the water is going to be discolored. So if you've got a combination of that, that is going to be evident. In other words, a person is going to open up the tap. You're going to find that the water is discolored. Um, many times when that happens, it's a matter of um, uh, the first thing that one thinks about is the fact that or the question is asked, did the municipality work on the lines? Now, if they have not worked on the lines, obviously there's no um, rusty colored water that's going to enter the system. But if it has happened and the baffle box um, did disintegrate or came loose, then that is going to, to happen. So the water will be discolored and also you will find this smelly um, uh, smell that you're going to, to uh, experience like, uh, like rotten eggs. So in final summary, the presence of the SRB bacteria is not harmful to humans. That's very important to remember that. The SRB bacteria may be the cause of the rotten egg smell of water. And remember, it's not a cold water, it's only on the hot water site. And uh, when detected while the geese is under warranty from the manufacturer, then uh, you must find out whether the manufacturer is going to honor the warranty and guys, I'm not allowed to say anything about any manufacturers. So all I do, I refer you to IOPSA. 
those members or manufacturers who are members of our OPSA, obviously our OPSA can then find out from them whether they will uh, honor the warranty if this uh, situation has taken place. Now, I just want to tell you uh, one thing that I've experienced this myself in the field. And within a matter of two and a half years after a new geyser was installed uh, in the area where this whole process took place, that geyser was absolutely destroyed on the inside. Um, the plumber cut it open and you could see, in fact, I still have a, a sample of that. It's very interesting. And uh, you can see there is no way that that geyser can ever be repaired again or be uh, fixed in any way. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this morning's little discussion, just a matter of making you aware of this situation that, uh, you know, in the old days, people thought that the rat jumped into the, uh, into the geyser. Those old combination geysers, uh, where there was a lid on it with a normal closed high pressure geyser, there is no way any rat can get in there. So the rotten egg that you smell is not a dead rat. It is a situation that's caused by bacterial corrosion. Thank you.